A special thank you to the Capcom Creator Program for providing me with this code to Resident Evil. I remember back when Resident Evil Village first came out. Around the same time I was entering the gaming content creation space. And seeing how much fun my friends were having with the game. And I was having fun watching them play. But when it came to accessibility options, they simply didn't exist. And I couldn't play it. So when the Resident Evil 4 remake was announced, my accessibility expectations were, to put it bluntly, in hell. <laughs> but to my surprise, Capcom actually managed to make some progress where there once was none. But is it enough? Let's talk about it. What's up Dynamites? I'm Kennedy and welcome to the level where we talk about accessibility in gaming. It's our first accessibility review of the year for us and I'm super excited to jump into what I guess I would consider season two of the level. It's super exciting to have this Capcom title be our first title of review for the year. Um, I'm a Capcom creator now, so obviously I was super stoked when they sent me that this code the day before release, which is why y'all are getting this review a little bit on the late side. And we have a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff to get into, and some suggestions on how they can better their accessibility. Because while there is some things, there are still some things that they could make better in terms of design and in terms of player options. So without further ado, let's get into the menu overview. First in the options, you have your control settings. There's no customizable button remapping in the game, but you do have several different controller presets to choose from, as well as different button options for your knife parry and your quick turn. You can choose a toggle or hold option for your run and crouch type, which can be a little wonky, but we'll get into that in the feedback section. You also have an option to press or hold repeated button inputs. You also have aim assist, which you can toggle on or off with the options being to snap or snap and follow which can also be a little wonky, but we'll get into that in the feedback section as well. Along with that, you also have sliders to control strength and reticle speed and the aim assist. In the camera section, you have all your standard camera speed and inversion options, as well as a few, the view slider and a motion sensor camera mode and running assist. In the display options, you most notably have the ability to change your aim color, your laser sight color, and three different options for your biosensor scope. All other HUD options just have to do with opacity and there's no other way to change your HUD colors for things like damage display or the color of your weapons inventory or the HP UI. There's also no color blindness settings here. In the audio section, you have multiple sliders for multiple different sounds in game, which is nice. You also have volume options for the ballistic impact, which I personally love. In the language section of the menu, you have all of your subtitle settings, which you can choose to have them on or off. There are also caption subtitles, which tells you when sounds are happening in the game as you're playing and in cutscenes. Subtitle sizes range from small to large, and you can change the subtitle background, opacity, color, and choose whether to display speaker name and have multiple different colors to choose from to highlight the speaker name in the subtitles. And there's a preview for all of this, which 
we know I love to give people extra points for previews. And then in the accessibility section, you have presets for visual accessibility, auditory accessibility, and motion thickness. Now, when you click these presets, unlike other games that I know that have these presets, like The Last of Us Part 1 and 2 or God of War Ragnarok, you can't edit the options within the presets to fit your specific needs. It's just the options that are pre-selected for you by the devs. And there are some gameplay things that aren't mentioned in this list that we're gonna talk about here in a second in the gameplay overview. So let's get into it. I played the chainsaw demo before the game came out on stream. The demo was automatically on standard, which I found to be extremely difficult. The enemies for me were extremely aggressive and the aim assist was extremely iffy. I couldn't complete the demo on my own. I had to call in a member of my mod squad, Daisy, also known as my anti-frustration feature, to help me finish things out through the PS5 share play feature, which was an adventure in and of itself. I had the aim assist on snap and follow mode and at maximum strength. And I encountered many situations where it was snapping, but it wouldn't follow. The lack of auto loot was also a ginormous hindrance here as I wanted to pick everything up, but his enemies were crowding me in the village. I couldn't do that. And eventually, through every attempt on my own, constantly having to press the X button to pick things up and then constantly having to run by pressing the sprint button constantly because the sprint toggle only kept Leon running for a short amount of time, my hands were exhausted. And the aggression of the enemies only made things worse. Having that experience in the demo once again put my expectations even further into hell for full release. But when I got the game and saw the assist mode, I decided to try it out to see if there would be any difference in the aggression of enemies, mainly. And boy, were they nerfed. And I'm not going to necessarily complain about that because I needed that toned down aggression in order to deal with the nature of how the game works currently and how the aim assist works. But if the aim assist works properly, you could speed them up a smidge and not have to worry too much about the aggression. If Granados are up in my face and not grabbing me, grabbing Leon by the shirt, then it's a problem. It makes them less scary. I haven't had a moment where I've just been like, ah, because things were just slowed down to a snail's pace. And when you're making a game with accessibility involved, there are times for that. There are times when you might need to add a slow-mo option or something like that. But that's why it's best to give the player an option to enable that. But when you're operating off of ableist ideas and not bringing disabled people into the early, early conversations of developing the game, I feel like the conversation of this is what I'm able to do as a disabled human and here's what I need for your game to be able to function in player experience, how I would enjoy it gets lost. And as a result, the stereotype of we need to reduce every threat to the most non-threatening, almost infantile level of danger creeps in because this certain set of people can't handle it. And I feel like that's what happened with Resident Evil for a remake. Because while assisted mode is like the auto aim is on, all of this, but it takes away from the scary experience. Like I need a mode, I need an aggression that's somewhere in the middle between assisted mode and 
standard. I need accessibility tools that work properly. And you know, I see Capcom trying and that's why I'm sitting here trying to make this video. So I'm here to say that while the accessibility was there as a result of them not speaking with disabled people on these measures and just attempting to copy a template that's already there. The accessibility is somewhat there, but it's a lackluster or something. Capcom, Gusties, I'm in the creator program. I know you can do better. That's, that's why I'm here making this video for you. So I'm gonna take this time to speak to the devs and tell y'all some of the issues that I ran into while playing Resident Evil Remake and to the audience as well. If y'all wanna hear some of the troubles that I had in complete detail and tell y'all some of the recommendations that I had for the issues that I ran across. And I'm also gonna have examples from The Last of Us Parts 1 and 2 because it's the only survival horror game that I know with accessibility settings this deep <laughs> and from other titles as well. So hold on to your butts. Hi Capcom besties, let's sit and have a conversation about the main issues that I've run into while playing RE4 and what you can do to fix it. I see you trying and I'm here to help. So let's get into it. Okay, first and foremost for me, the thing that dug into my playtime the most, and I've had conversations with my friends who have played Resident Evil games about this, is navigation. I am, as we like to say on my stream, directionally challenged, okay? The navigation assistance feature in The Last of Us Part 1 and 2 is the best thing to happen to me since sliced bread. Waypoints are my best friend. I constantly get lost, turned around if we're in crowded spaces, if we're in spaces where everything looks the same, like the village or whatever, I, I, will, I will look at my map. My brain will be like, okay, this is where we need to go. And then once I close my map, get get lost again. It, it happens, it's just a thing that I experience as a player. And um, I found the fact that I had to keep opening and closing my map over and over and over and over mildly frustrating um because i was doing it quite so much i would love the inclusion of a mini map we don't have to include on-screen waypoints i understand that that can hinder some design visions that we want i understand that but a mini map even just the ability to like have the map open whilst I move Leon through a sector because I just get stuck on little sections like in Among Us, like how you can still have the map open and move your character around the screen, kind of like that. Or even in The Last of Us Part 1 and 2, when they have the navigation assist tool that is just like, zoop, Go this way, you press L3, there's an arrow that pops up that says, best friend, right over here. That doesn't get, a, get in the way of your design and it helps your player stay in the narrative and get places faster. I would appreciate that in Resident Evil 4. The second thing that I ran across is lack of enemy sight indicators, okay? And lack of enemy visibility, specifically when we're on the bridge. I forget specifically what it's called. I forget what chapter it's in, but we're on a bridge. I pulled out a sniper rifle in particular. You were killing a bunch of Granados. I had trouble 
seeing those granados from distance um with field of view maxed out mind you i had trouble with that um what would help me in that situation is something similar to what they have in far cry 6 which is an outline is drawn around the enemy just like a general outline like a little highlighter color to say hello um i am an enemy here in this blue like outline border um you can shoot at me i would love that just for the sake of visibility the granados are really hard to see and then also on the other end of enemy sight indicators. I want to try and stealth in Resident Evil. I know it's possible, but listen, if Granados are coming at me from the left side, I need to know how much of me they can see. And not only is this great for stealthy players like me who like to sell, but for are players that are hard of hearing or anything like that. If you're roaming around the world and you can't hear the Granados, how are you supposed to know when you've been seen? Except for when your HP bar and stuff pops up or like when you're coming in the presence of one. And I think all of us here are familiar with the indicators in the last of us games when a clicker almost sees you or any enemy period it's it's like a sound indicator and then it's like a little white slider i'm gonna put footage for y'all to see it get him another thing that I'm running to, and I'm gonna stress this again, besties, auto loot. Auto loot would be so super important because let me tell you, friends, um, the fact that you removed QTEs, great. You were thinking of us motor challenge people when you thought of that. The fact that you removed some of the button mashing, great, love that, love a good hold. But it kinda counteracts your point when we have to constantly press a button in stressful situations or otherwise to pick up loot, best friends. Next, in the context of RE4, because I don't know if any other RE game has this, and those of y'all in the RE fandom can educate me in the comments because maybe they do, but um, Ashley, and I think we know where I'm going with this. If you're sitting here and you are familiar with the shenanigans of RE4. <laughs> Miss Ashley Ma'am will get snapped up by a Granado and then you have to chase said Granado or shoot at them either or to um grab her now for someone like me who has a lack of motor control lack of direction when it comes to my video game sense I need camera assist this kind of ties into the next point that I was gonna show you guys so I guess we'll tie them together Ashley chase windows and camera assist okay so if a Granado runs off screen with Ashley and Granados are surrounding me, this happens often, okay? If a Granado grabs Ashley and I have to run past the Granados and grab Ashley, my eyes are very quick, quick to lose her and say, gosh, where did she go? And like, do I see the indicator on screen that's like, Yes, she's over here, but I would still very much appreciate it if the camera said, turn, Ashley's headed this way. And also within that vein, I feel like there needs to be some sort of chase window. 
I find that when Ashley is taken, it depends on how close the Granado is to a, like a door or something, but there needs to be some sort of like chase window. For those of you who aren't familiar with what chase windows are, I think automatically of the Spider-Man series and their remasters and how if you are Peter Parker in Spider-Man or Miles Morales, for those of you who are not aware, um, there are often times where you have to go swing throughout the city chasing vehicles. These vehicle chases used to be extremely timed. And if you're disabled like me, they're extremely rough on your fingers. Now with the remasters, we have chase assist windows, which lengthen the amount of time that the player has to catch up to the car, the enemy, the whatever, to allow them to complete that little section. I feel like we need some extended time chase windows for Ashley. Just specifically speaking, as someone who has motor issues, someone who can't move her camera very fast because it's on the right joystick, which is my least um, nimble hand, we'll say. I just need that extra bit of time and camera assist to catch up with her, which again brings me back around to camera assist. If I am running from Granados chasing Ashley, I'm gonna need some help because I can run whatever way to get away from the Granados, but my brain isn't gonna move fast enough to say, okay, right finger, let's move the camera in a quick motion to the left. That's just not happening. That's just not how my nerves like to communicate with each other. So I need the camera to fix itself to do that for me. The camera assist as it is now doesn't really do that for a girl. <laughs> And um, that needs to be fixed if we're going to call it a real camera assist feature. But yes, Capcom friends, this is just a few of the many things that I think you could do to improve the gameplay of RA4 and many more Resident Evil games to come. Also, adding in the colorblind settings, and et cetera. You be on your way. I know you can do it. That's why I'm here. Like I'm calling this video <laughs> like Resident Evil 4 progress was made because I'm gonna give you a pat on the back for, for progress because we reached the stage jumping from RE8 to now where there is something, but family, family, it needs to be better. And I know you can do better. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told the Deathloop devs and they delivered it. I'm hoping you will do the same. I know you can do better and I challenge you to do better. I'm here to help. There are tons of accessibility advocates out there that are willing to help you give disabled people a seat at the table. Don't just sit there, cut corners, assume that you know what we need. Because this is how these situations happen. You have to sit with us as disabled people at the table and talk to us. If you want the best accessibility experience with your game, nothing about us without us, fam. Point blank and period. Overall, the Resident Evil accessibility is one of those things where I'm gonna say to you, as a viewer watching this, you're like, well, Dynamic, what are your overall thoughts on the accessibility of Resident Evil? Here's my thing. If you have a light to moderate motor disability, like I do, I'm gonna say, if you can, I'm not gonna tell you to spend money on this game if you can't spend money. I know that 
as disabled people, our money can be tight. <laughs> and choosing to spend money on hobbies and pastimes that we have, like video games, um, can be a big purchase for us. So I'm going to say to you, if you have a friend who has a copy or a friend you can use PS5 share play with or remote play with, go try it at your friends first. Go try it at your friends first. Um, if there's a way to do things without doing the demo, because there are more accessibility options in the full game. Um, if there's a way to do things where you can try out a bit of the game for yourself without having to spend your cash, do that first. Um, if you have a way where you can try it out and refund it later, do that. Just approach, if you have a motor disability, approach this game with such caution. Approach with caution. If you have color blindness, um, I'm not colorblind, so I'm not gonna speak for every everybody on the blindness spectrum here. Um, there are no color blindness options if you still want to um, play that's on you. But for me, there's a lot more that they could have done. There's a lot more that could have been addressed, that should be addressed, that I hope will be addressed in the future. Um, just make your purchases, make your um, choices wisely um don't spend money where you can't spend it i can't say with absolute certainty that this will be fully accessible for you it's not fully accessible for me that's what i will say um and also it's not completely um blind accessible at all so if you are completely blind steer clear of the game it's not it's not accessible for you at all but I see crumbs. I see crumbs. I see crumbs and here's my here's my deal. I want the full meal Capcom is what I'm saying. I see crumbs and I want a feast. Give it to me. I know y'all can do it. I know you can do it. I see the potential. That's pretty much my thoughts on the game in and of itself. Sorry if this review ran a little bit long. Ho hopefully not. Um, I can't wait to do more of these accessibility reviews this year for y'all. Stay tuned for a lot more gaming content. It's gonna get a lot more uh, lively around here, especially in the summer in terms of, oh, excuse me, gaming content and yeah, uh, don't forget you're important. I love you. Give me your thoughts on Resident Evil and right down below, your accessibility thoughts, your general thoughts, all the thoughts. And don't forget, you deserve accessibility that's on the level. <laughs>